AI and the mark of the beast. Who, just by show of hands, who has heard of AI before? Okay, maybe the better question is who has not heard of AI before? All right, just a couple of you. Okay, well, this is good. I mean, I, I'm not going to assume you guys know everything uh, about this. I'll give a little bit of basic uh, understanding of what a- AI is. But AI means artificial intelligence. I watched a lot of television growing up, and I won't um, tantalize your ears with stories of fantasy that I enjoyed as a young person, but realized how much evil they really were. But I watched a lot of TV, and some of my favorite movies and TV shows were all about fantasy, about what they call sci-fi, science fiction. And it painted a a dystopian picture of the future uh, with these different movies, The Matrix and Terminator and and, um, uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey. And we watched these movies and and we kind of thought, well, you know, this is this is so fanciful that it would never happen. But it's very interesting that we're on the cusp right now of a revolution, a disruption on Earth in Earth's history concerning this thing called artificial intelligence. Now I wanted to know just how many movies have been made about artificial intelligence and, and this, this painting of the picture of how it would play into the end of the world, the destruction of all humanity. So I went to AI to ask. And here's what it is. This is OpenAI. This is Chat GPT. And I'll read it here. It says, how many movies feature AI taking over the world? That was my question. The answer came back, while it is difficult to provide an exact count, It is safe to say there are dozens of movies that feature AI taking over the world as a prominent plot element. The concept of AI dominance or rebellion against humanity has been a reoccurring theme in science fiction films, and the number of movies exploring this idea continues to grow as the popularity of AI-related narratives increase. You know, I always wondered, was it it science fiction and movies that, that drove people to actually discover the real artificial intelligence? I'm not sure. But it's interesting that uh, right now, as I've heard in the news, there's a strike in Hollywood. And one of the reasons they're striking is they're afraid that artificial intelligence is going to take over their jobs, that, that, that AI is going to write their scripts for them. Now, I already think there's something supernatural writing their scripts for them, and I'm going to say that's not of God. That being said, it's ironic that those that once predicted the rise of AI, now that AI is here, They're scared it's going to take their jobs. Hollywood has made a big deal about artificial intelligence like it has with alien invasions and all these things. And I just sometimes wonder if Satan, using those mediums, that's why they call it media, by the way, using those mediums is really preparing humanity for something to come in a very negative way. Let's talk about it. What is AI? The simple version is AI, artificial intelligence, refers to machines that use vast amounts of data to make decisions and to create content through learning and reasoning. It's like a, it's like a brain, but it's a computer brain that is learning, that is able to reason. And... Um, and it's, you know, the, by a lot of different standards and measurements, it actually has surpassed humanity in its thinking capabilities. Now, there are things that AI cannot do like humans can do, but when it comes to knowledge and processing information, vastly beats what humanity can do. Everybody in this room put together, all your brain power cannot compete with what AI can do. So in this message today, I'm going to share a few positives and several concerns about AI. Uh, Some say AI is of the devil. It's of the devil. In fact, it's demonic, and Elon Musk said so. Well, actually, I have the quote. He said, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Well, (laughs) um, he was speaking metaphorically, of course. But some wonder if there wasn't a literal context. In fact, there are Christians out there who claim that demons speak through AI. And there's, there's communic- you, can set, you can set up 
even chat GPT, you can set it up in such a way as to create a, a role play, if you will, in which it takes the caricature of a demon and you can talk to this demon and it will give you counsel. I'm telling you, there, there's so many weird, kooky and strange, and I can't think of any other words, uh, um, really sick ways that this technology can be used and it's being used by some. I'll share some more about that in a little bit. But now there's Christians, though, that are saying that AI, which, by the way, has just risen up in the last year or two in a, in, a, in a larger way than it has throughout our entire history, in reality, here. And people, Christians, are, are you know, anything, something new comes on the horizon. That's the mark of the beast. Barcodes, it's a mark of the beast. Computer chips, mark of the beast. And so now there's Christians out there teachers of Bible prophecy who say with authority that the mark of the beast is none other than artificial intelligence. Well, it needs to be addressed. But we're going to look at that today. Um, by the way, here's another quote from Elon Musk about artificial intelligence. He said, the danger of artificial intelligence is much greater than the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Now, of course, he expands on this quite a bit, but his idea is that this artificial intelligence out of control is going to, has the potential to wreak havoc on Earth and even end humanity, just like the movies and the plots make it out to be. I'm not so sure that's the case, but that's certainly what he said. Now, if you've ever Googled anything, if you've ever used a smartphone, if you have a smart watch or virtually any smart technology, <clears throat> if you have an Amazon account or a Facebook account or any social media, all of those use AI. And Amazon, you know, it uses AI to determine what will you buy next. Let me tell you. <laughs> With social media, it tells you what will you want to watch so that you'll stay on this platform, keep watching our advertising, and increase our revenues. Your bank uses AI to fight fraud. Siri, Alexa, and Google. These platforms use AI uh, increasingly so to understand what you're saying, to respond to requests, to generate answers that are supposed to be factual. Not always the case, by the way. There's things they call artifacts and, and things they, they call it hallucinations. You know, AI can hallucinate. No, I've seen it before. You, 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 you put in the AI and you say, tell me this about that. And it comes up. I, in fact, I, I was looking, doing a historical research and uh, I, have an, I have a plug in on my, on my browser that it, basically when I do a Google search, it pops up an AI result as well through chat GPT. And I was doing a Google search for this one gentleman in history and, um, and it popped up a complete fake biography that never existed as if it was absolutely factually true. They call it a hallucination. They say it's rare, but it happens, and it, it's, it happens. <laughs> you got to be careful what you trust. Tesla has now a full self-driving technology. It used to be, uh, I, I've been in a Tesla before, and I tell you, it's really neat. Whenever the hands are off the wheel and you're on the road, you're going straight, and you're, okay. You know, it's basically, but that was before full self-driving technology. Now, the cars will actually take you off-road on a road it's never been on before and can still stay in the lane, avoid objects. It's just amazing. And they've actually shown, and they've proved it safer, Tesla cars safer with the automations, the full self-driving, than it is with a human driver. Now, I don't know about you. I mean, that's, that's talking about there's a, there's a lesson of faith there that can... That, uh, that we need to learn, put our faith in God, not in machines. But nevertheless, uh, you, when you put your brake down, you have faith that's going to work, right? You trust machines. The question is, will we trust these ones that seem to be smarter than us and maybe goes a little further than what they should? If you ever get a scan or an x-ray to hospital, uh, they're more and more using AI technology in diagnostics. Uh, AI can create art that will blow you away. I was a little selective today in creating my art. In fact, uh, the image you saw as my opening thumbnail with the robot reading a Bible and praying, that was all AI generated. I, I created that using 
uh, generative AI. Here's another AI image of the Tower of Babel. Now, I, I created this one here because I, I wanted to illustrate a part of my sermon later on. Uh, but I thought, you know, it's really interesting. You just type in a few uh, prompts and tell it what it should make, and boom, boom, or boom, or one of those two, poof, I was going with poof and boom. Out comes this art that looks pretty incredible. Um, wow. Now, there's a friend of mine, Sean Hoffman, he's created several AI uh, images that uh, back in the Exodus days, and so here's a few of his uh, pieces of artwork that are completely generated by AI. Just put some prompts in there, boom, out comes this. Uh, does that look like almost real? Um, now, of course, when it comes to text and fingers and faces sometimes, AI can uh, not always get it right, but this is uh, Moses. Is that my last one? I don't know how many more I got here. Oh, I guess, okay. So, Christians, should they be afraid of knowledge, information, and technology, and intelligence? Should Christians be afraid of that? Just the opposite. Christians should be ones to pursue. Look here at Proverbs 18.15. The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Christians have a duty to pursue. You know, I'm so thankful looking back in Christian history. You, look, you find all the champions of, of science up until evolution and even since then some, uh, the champions of science and technology, I mean, many of those were Christians. People who believe in the Scriptures, love the Lord their God with all their heart, believe that God created the world, and they believe because God created them incredibly, God has given you the same gifts, creative talents. Not the same exactly, but you know what I'm saying, the similar creative abilities. In fact, you go back to AI, and what is AI? AI was developed by who? Human beings. Now, humans have been known to take their technology, like in the A-bomb and such, and take their knowledge and use it to make terrible technology. Destructive things that destroy and kill. So there's a great potential for good. There's a great potential for evil as well in the pursuit of knowledge. Obviously, the heart of the prudent in acquiring knowledge um, means the good knowledge. The, right, the, the, the knowledge that the knowledge of God, the knowledge of things that help humanity, your brothers and sisters. Proverbs 4, verse 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Intelligence is something that's good. I'm just highly, highly recommending, urging, counseling, caution when it comes to artificial intelligence. We must be careful not to substitute uh, genuine intelligence, right, for what's artificial, for what's uh, negative, what's really bad for us. I, I thought about this. You know, what, it, what if instead of artificial intelligence, what, what if we discovered artificial faith? Would, be, would people be scrambling for that? How about artificial worship? How about artificial love? See, th those things don't sound appealing at all, do they? But somehow artificial intelligence does. Now, what's another word for artificial? <laughs> Somebody said fake. What's another one? False. Now, obviously, there's maybe different categories there. I'm not going to blanketly condemn artificial intelligence like I maybe would art artificial worship. That said, is there people out there who have artificial faith and artificial worship and artificial love? Absolutely. There's, in fact, I would say the majority of humanity have embraced all three of those, but they wouldn't call it that. So in the same way, friends, when we search out and pursue knowledge and information and, 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 and um, intelligence, let us make sure that we're pursuing the, the holy brand, not the unholy brand of it. So I say let's tackle AI carefully. And let's remember this. Jesus did not need AI to serve his Father. Can I get an amen? He didn't need AI to understand the Bible. He didn't need AI to minister to other people, okay? Now, I'm not saying don't use the tools in front of you. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But, friends, I would insist that we be careful to not think that we need to depend on this. Can you use it? Sure. But depending on it, not necessarily. 
Jesus received his intelligence from his Father by meditating on his word, by staying constant in prayer, by receiving the Holy Spirit. Luke 2.52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. That being said, let me ask, will AI be the mark of the beast? Will AI be the mark of the beast? Now, if you turn to Revelation chapter 13 in your Bibles, you can see there that it predicts, I'd encourage you to open your Bibles. They were actually going to be there a couple different places in Revelation, so please open your Bibles there. All right, Revelation chapter 13. I won't read the entirety of it here, but there's a few points that I want to bring out to you because Revelation 13 predicts the rise of who? The Antichrist, right? In fact, that, the first beast is called the sea beast or the leopard-like beast. And this beast wants one thing, worship. Now it says there in verse 4, I believe, it says, So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. They worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worship the beast saying, who's like the beast, who's able to make war with him. When you worship the beast, who's ultimately getting your worship? Satan is getting your worship. Satan is the dragon, if you read on further uh, and, or actually behind there in chapter 12. So Satan wants your worship. He uses the puppet, this beast, to receive that worship. Then there comes a second beast, a, a beast from the land, this lamb-like beast. And this beast's main function isn't to receive worship, but to be the conduit of worship, to point people to the first beast. I should point is a very soft word. To push people toward the first beast to coerce people to the first beast with wonders and miracles and threats and laws, ultimately telling the world that you will not be able to buy or sell if you don't worship the first beast. Wow. If you don't get its mark, if you don't worship its image, if you don't take its name, you will be punished. Now, most people miss this, but the issue of the mark of the beast, friends, is not about anything other than worship. That is at its core the issue of the mark of the beast. Now, most scholars, I mean, I, I, it's amazing to me as I listen to these teachers teach about prophecy and the most basic truth of Revelation 13 and 14 is completely missed. It's all about worship. It's not about a tattoo, it's not about a barcode or a computer chip or an algorithm. It's about worship. And because people are going to miss this point, guess what? They're going to end up getting the mark of the beast. They're warning about this over here and, and running away from this over here all the while. They're just falling right into the trap of the enemy over here. The mark of the beast is not physical but spiritual. Now we all have, <clears throat> for example, take out your phone for just a second. I'm going to, I'm going to illustrate something to you. If you just take out your phone. Now, the mark of the beast is not physical. You hear me on this. If the mark of the beast was physical, we'd all be in trouble. Now, you put your phone in your right hand. Now, if the mark of the beast is a computer chip, you now have the mark of the beast in your right hand. Okay? I mean, you're right. Everybody's got one. It's ubiquitous. Everybody has one. And if this is the mark of the beast, or if the computer chip is the mark of the beast, you don't have to have it implanted subderm, subderm, subdermally. Is that, am I saying that right? Under the skin for it to be in your right hand. That's in my right hand. But it's not the mark of the beast because the mark of the beast is not a physical thing. The mark of the beast is a spiritual thing. It is a symbolic mark. Now, Bible school scholars and students of prophecy have correctly identified. Now, hold on to your seats now for just a minute. If you don't understand what I'm saying, let's do a Bible study about it. But I, scholars and students of Bible prophecy have correctly identified the first beast of Revelation 13, verses 1 through 10, as none other than the Roman Catholic Church system. Now, the second beast has been identified as Protestant America. That these two beasts would work in cahoots to ultimately bring worship to Satan. It didn't start out that way. It was a lamb-like beast at first, but it eventually speaks like a dragon. So this mark of the beast, it's a mark of the first beast, understand this, is a sign or a mark of the Roman Catholic power. So get that. So it's a mark of the beast. I'm not here to beat up on Catholics. I love Catholics. 
like a lot of you are, have, used to be Catholics because you saw this truth and you said, wow, I can't, I can't follow this anymore. I've got to follow the Bible. I can't follow man-made tradition anymore. So praise God for that. But it's the system I'm talking about, not the people. It's the system. And, and here's, here's what happens, friends. They, they say out of their own lips, our mark of authority is what? It's Sunday observance. Because the mark of the Catholic Church is power. It's a counterfeit of God's mark or sign of loyalty. Now, in the Bible, God says His sign of authority, His sign of loyalty, several times in the book of Exodus. He mentions it twice in the book of Ezekiel. God's sign of authority is the seventh-day Sabbath. And those who keep it are a, are a banner to the world. And you've got Sunday sacredness. The change of the Sabbath the, the, the tampering with God's law, moving it from the seventh day to the first day of the week, this counterfeit becomes a sign of the beast or mark of the beast. That's what the papacy claims to be their sign of authority. So again, I have to ask, could AI be the mark of the beast? Not at all. Even if even if you, you, you narrowed it down to a link. Now, there's, you, there's, there's this company out there, that Elon Musk starts so many companies. He's got the boring company, drills holes through the earth. He's got Tesla. He's got all this. One of his big companies, it's kind of in the background right now, but it's going to shortly be in the foreground, is this company called Neuralink. He is literally implanting chips in the brain. And through those chips, he, you can control things. Now, let's just say that this Neuralink, which is an actual existence, being tested, and all these things right now, Let's just say that this becomes a reality, and let's just say it becomes affordable. Let's just say it actually becomes mandatory that our government, just like they did with, with, with the vaccines and stuff, let's just say that they, this is for the good of humanity. You need this, and they start putting it on people and saying, you've got to get it. Now, I'm gonna, this is one last proof that the mark of the beast is not a physical thing. If this Neuralink came to your house, and they said, you've got to put it in your head, and you said, not going to happen, Right? You're taking a stand. You're doing what you believe is right. Now let's just say they put a, inject you with some stuff. They knock you out. While you're unconscious, they put this in your brain. Do you now have the mark of the beast? Let's just say, hypothetically, if it's the mark of the beast, and they put it in you by force against your will, do you have the mark of the beast? No. That, right there is enough to prove that it's not a physical thing. You, it's all about choice. It's about who you decide who you worship, right? I mean, alternatively, you go to uh, your neighbor's house, who's an atheist, and they go to bring him the mark of the beast. He said, nuh-uh, not going to do it. And he runs and hides or fights or whatever he does. He doesn't end up getting the Neuralink chip in his brain. Does he then not have the mark of the beast when that time comes? I mean, he's still going to get it, right? Because he's not worshiping the Creator. He's not obeying God and His Ten Commandments. So my point is, is that the real mark of the beast issue is an issue of worship, not an issue of a physical mark. Now, God gives us very strong warnings. By the way, I'm not, by the way, I am totally against this Neuralink program, totally, but not because it's the mark of the beast. Okay, but God gives us some very strong warnings right there in Revelation chapter 14. This is the mark. This is the warning that says, "If you've got your Bible open, you can read this." There it says, "The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast in his image.' I'm sorry, this is verse eight." Sorry, that's verse 9. If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation, and he'll be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Do you think this is something we should figure out and get right? Can you see how vitally important it is to not mistake what the mark of the beast is? I mean, every time a new fad comes on the scene, it's, it's like people with a, with a dart, with darts just out there like throwing out there, oh, I'll take that one. That's the mark of the beast right there. There's no substance to it. And they're just, it's just like guesswork. Friends, God has given us many clues to know what the mark of the beast is. And it is not AI. As bad as it is, it's not AI. In fact, another reason we can know what it's about is verse 12. He says, here's the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Now, this is very important because this shows you the mark of the beast issue is about true worship and obedience. 
The ones who don't get the mark of the beast, you'll notice here, are keeping God's commandments. Earlier it says that they also are written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay? So things, this is, so is the mark of the beast going to be AI? No. But here's where things get sticky. Will AI play a part in the enforcement of the mark of the beast? My short answer is possibly. I'm not certain. But I say there's a strong likelihood of it. There's going to be a, there, is a, there seems to be, to me, that there would be a connection between AI and the mark of the beast being enforced. Now, I'm not convinced that AI is going to take over the world. Now, I don't think so. In fact, all the movie plots, all the great warnings and the, and the pontificating by these, these technology gurus saying that this is a, the greatest global threat since climate change, then you know what? I believe that Satan uses this line of thinking to cause people to run to somebody for answers. Somebody's going to have to have a solution to our, to our, to our problems right now. You know, actually, the biggest, biggest problem right now with AI is that they say, well, you know, there are several companies that are willing to put the pause on and say, okay, we're, 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 we, we got to think this thing through. We got to make sure we're doing things ethically. We're going to make sure it doesn't get run out of control and, you know, end up becoming Skybot and taking over the world. I think Sky, was it Skybot? Sky? I think it was. And, and so what they say is, we'll put a pause. But here's the thing. Is China taking a pause? How about these other countries? They're not taking pauses. So there's this, there's this tension to say, wow, what are we going to do if, if, if I pause, but they're not going to pause? I'm going to lose money. So I'm not going to pause unless he pauses, and he's not going to. So, and what happens is, every, and it's this big push for money is really the, the name behind this game. But again, what does Satan do? It's this, this, this uh, thesis, antithesis, synthesis, right? This, this, this idea that Satan creates a problem over here and a problem over here so that you ultimately get to the solution that he really wants you to have, right? And I believe that there's one world power, prophecy predicted in Revelation 13, that will step up and enforce this mark of the beast. And it'll have the final word and the say, and there'll be a moral authority to that, I think, through the Vatican. Now, I, I, you, know, you can Google it. I haven't seen a whole lot of noise about it right now. But prophecy tells me what's happening behind the scenes. I don't need to read a newspaper headline to understand prophecy. Too many people do that today. They, they read the newspaper headline and they say, okay, where's that in the Bible? That's not how you do it, friends. You discover what the Bible says, and then you watch as it takes place. Like, like climate change, I mentioned earlier, alien invasions, other worldwide you know, nuclear catastrophes and all these things. It really, what it does is it, it unites the whole world under one common enemy. And this world being united is what the Bible predicts is going to happen. And you always wonder, how is it going to unite? And I think it could be a mixture of several of these. Of course, the beast itself is the one who's going to come as the savior of humanity, the Antichrist. Everyone will turn to it. Now, there's another scenario where the beast uses the technology to actually enforce the penalty. Think about this. Just as the, a cashless or wireless financial system, you know, you read the Bible, it almost, you almost have to have a cashless system to worldwide enforce the mark of the beast. How are you going to tell people they can't buy or sell if, if they got cash in the pocket and other things? You know, it, it almost seems like a cashless society has to be where we're headed to. I don't know that it has to be. Satan has a lot of ways that he does things. I don't, I'm not trying to guess Satan's next plan. But I, it almost seems to me, friends, that for a cashless society to work so effectively, that AI really needs to be behind it. So having AI on the side of coercion and enforcement really does make a lot of sense. I mean, consider that the intimidation of the beast, right, using economic pressures, can't buy or sell, as well as the threats against your life, right, death penalty, these are the main control mechanisms to challenge your loyalty to God and your worship to God and your obedience to God. Now, there's many applications of AI, but the economic applications, I believe, are going to be some of the strongest. In fact, I mentioned earlier that money is the greatest motivator, so it appears. Of almost, almost every evil invention that has happened in mankind is because somebody said, I'm going to make some profit off of that. And this AI train running out of control is going to happen because people are looking for the bottom dollar. And 
So, so how, it's just going to all tie in economically. And you can see that right now. Have you heard of CB, uh, CBDCs? So you're, this is going to be a, just like AI is common to yours right now. You take a year from today, maybe two, this is going to be a common word. Everybody's going to know about it. Central bank digital currency. It's a, basically, it's a digital form of the country's fiat currency. Our fiat currency is the United States, you know, the U.S. dollar. Um, but I want you to think about, instead of that being our standard currency, having Bit, a Bitcoin-like um, currency. It's all digital. And by the way, you're already getting there. I mean, we're not there yet, and it's, it, there's been experimentation, and there's certain, um, uh, you know, presidential orders that have been given about this, but it's, we're not there yet. But have you ever transferred money online? Have you ever deposited a check online? I mean, it, it, these, I'm telling you right now, we are already on the cusp of what is going to take place with these central bank digital currencies. Right now, 130 countries. How many, how many countries? 130 countries representing 98% of the global GDP are exploring CBDCs. Of those, 64 countries are in an advanced stage of exploration. 19 G20 countries are in advanced stages of CBDC development with nine in the pilot phase. Now, this pilot phase is where right now, China and Japan and other countries, uh, India, are already moving into this place where, okay, let's try it out. Let's have some trial. Let's see, let's see what this looks like in action, in real life scenarios. Now, of course, they have, everybody has their different CBDC. You know, you got the, 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 the Chinese, yon, was it, the, you, I'm going to get all my currencies mixed up if I start trying to name them all. But you got the different ones out there, uh, and they're going to be competing. Because there's, I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot behind the U.S. dollar and the support of that. And, every, and so the U.S. is going to jump on this bandwagon fairly soon as well. Um, but here's the thing. AI is at the core of the implementation and function of these CBDCs. Now here it is again from the Scriptures. It says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor. Now I, I, now I want to emphasize the poor part. People think, oh, no, no, the poor aren't going to be affected by this. When I was in the country of India, which is a very poor country, you can, it was hard to exchange any money, uh, American dollars, for, the, for the, was it uh, rupees, rubles, rupees? I can't remember what it was. I didn't get a whole lot of them because they wouldn't do exchanges because everybody's going digital. This is a country of over a billion people, a lot more than our country, and they're going completely digital. Even the poor people got their credit cards and their debit cards. The free and slave. By the way, there's, as you, if you've been watching the news lately, there is a lot of slavery still going on in the world today. You know that. To receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Buying and selling, friends, that is what it's going to come down to. And what's the control mechanism? I think AI is going to play a big part. Revelation 17, 12 through 14 talks about Babylon. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. There's a, there's a worldwide united confederacy. And then Revelation 18, verse 13, watch this now, for all nations, how many nations? have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Again, talking about Babylon. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. You see it? It's very clear, friends. The world will be involved in a worldwide economy in which there will be coercion and forced legislation they will give their power and authority to the beast. There's going to be a united world. And guess who's going to be on the, did you say target? That's, that's a good way to put it. Who's going to be on the um, destructive side or the destroyed side? It's going to be God's people. The faithful few who will stand, though everybody else is bowing down to the beast, they're going to be the ones who are going to be the targets. Now, I don't know exactly how it's going to play out. I don't pretend to know. 
But I can see, in a very practical way, AI playing a large part in the hands of both the beasts, both the Vatican, both the United States, to compel the world into a system of false worship. Now, I'm going to touch on two last points. What are the benefits of AI, and what are some dangers of AI? Uh, speaking of AI, I'm going to say this. AI is a tool. It's a tool. Now, a tool by itself is, you know, it's neutral. It's not evil. It's not good. It's just a tool. But it can be used, depending on how it is, it can be used for good or it can be used for evil. Right? It can be positive. It can be negative. But the moment it becomes more than just a tool, that's whenever AI becomes dangerous. It's like a cell phone, right? This is a tool. It's got a flashlight on it. It's got a compass if you want it. It's got uh, calendars, uh, ske- you know, where you can schedule, messaging, phones. It's a tool. But the moment it becomes more than that, it becomes an idol, oh, friends, you've got a problem. Now, certain things are not evil of themselves, but, but, it, but rather in how they're used. Think about this one. I'm going I'm to I'm say it. You know I'm going there. Television. Is television evil? Is television good? It's just TV. It's a screen that can display whatever you choose to put on it. Okay? So it comes down to you. You could be good or you could be evil and you could display what's right or what's wrong. That being said, is TV mostly used for good or mostly used for evil? Oh, I think if you were to put a percentage on it, I don't think I'm exaggerating. If I was to put up 97.5%, it's up there, friends. Television, movies, TV is a, a source of evil. It is. You're just, there's just no getting around that. Satan uses it more than God uses it. That being said, praise God for, for every single uh, program and message and, 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 uh, and person that gets on TV and shares the everlasting gospel. Praise God for that. People need to hear it. Oh, but friends, please understand. It can be used for evil. Internet is the same way. Cell phones the same way. Even a, even a tool like a knife can be used to cut and hurt, or it can be used like by a surgeon to heal. Tools are tools. And that's where I think AI is. AI is a tool. But let me just say something. AI is more in the category of the television, right, as a tool than a, than a, than a, a wrench. <laughs> it's, a, it's a kind of tool that if you are not extremely careful, it has potential for great, great evil. We use TV for evangelism. We use the internet for evangelism. We use radio for evangelism. My question is, can we use AI for evangelism? You better believe it. And I think it would be neglecting the tools that God has given us in our age to to not use it. Now, I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying that if it's there and God has given you that technological gift to be able to use these things, use it for His glory. Use it for His glory. Um, Talking about chat GPT, it's a tool that many people are using now. It's so advanced. This is this one I started off with showing you. It's so advanced. Get this now, that it has passed the medical, law, and business school exams. In fact, the GPT-4, which is the latest iteration, you've got to pay to get that stuff, soared above 90% on the bar exam. That could be your next lawyer. Probably, probably has scored better than most lawyers out there. I don't know. I shouldn't. Throw, throw the attorneys under the bus there. I've known a lot of them that I'm sure didn't score that high. So what am I saying? I'm saying that ChatGPT is smart. It has intelligence. Yes, it's artificial in the sense that it's not human. It's not God made directly. But it is smart. And, you know, there's some benefits to using this, these, this tool. There's some really big benefits to it. Um, using it like a teacher. You know, if you want to learn something, tell AI to teach you. And there will be so much information out there that will teach you. Using algorithms to, to, to better re- use our resources.
Is it bad to build a building? No, it was the worst thing about it, that was the case. It was the motivation behind it that was wrong. And that's what I'm calling out today. What's the motivation behind the creation and this, 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 this pursuit of this kind of technology? It's all about something. Now, I want to just list just a couple of the dangers of this, of this relentless pursuit for AI. Now, the biggest one, in my opinion, I'm going to sneak peek already, the biggest one, in my opinion, is that it causes God's people not AI, this is the danger. Now, I'm saying it doesn't have to do this. You, you, can, you have willpower, you have choice, you can keep it from doing this. Like, you can prevent yourself from watching things on TV or the internet, you should be watching. Or listen to a certain kind of music you should be listening to. You have that choice at all times, right? Well, we're in complete control of how you handle what is on AI and what's not. Like I said, it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. The AI is, you can't even go home today without somehow being influenced or affected by AI. You can choose, you, can, you have the power to not let it affect your reasoning and your own personal intelligence. God, now watch. I'll, I'll just, I think we're all still do. I just love that thought. God wants his people to think. Use the brain power God has given you. And I'm telling you, just like TV and the internet has taken the place of family time and reason. Just like cell phone, so often we keep God's people from praying constantly and meditating on spiritual things. Just like busyness and money making. Prevent God's people from fellowship, from worship, from doing outreach. In the same way, I believe Satan has a purpose behind AI. And it brings us to keep God's people from thinking for themselves. He's already done that to a great degree with other sources and mediums. But through AI, I think he's really going to cause a dumbing down of society which will affect you if you're not careful. The Bible says in Proverbs 15, verse 28, the heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours forth evil. And so it amazes me. You get on chat GPT, you get a little prompt in there, I think you about 15 seconds to write your prompt, and it will have an entire essay written in half that time. Just to answer your question. What's the biggest problem in society? <clears throat> Tons of information. Apparently, so called objectively, but you know it's not objective at all. In fact, that many research on different kinds of AI platforms has shown that it's, that there's political leanings, there's religious leanings, and it's not good in either of the case, in any case, really. Um, so it's not really objective as people need things. But what are the heart of the righteous do? Studies. Studies how to answer. Jesus said, search the scripture. Examine God's word. That is where our focus is to be. Now, listen to this powerful quote from the book Education, page 17. Every human being. Are you a human being? Amen. I can get least got two amens here. Are you a human being? Amen. Amen. All right. This is for you. Every human being created in the image of God is endowed with a power akin to that of the Creator. What is it? Individuality. Power to think and power to do. It is the work of true education to develop this power and to train the youth to do what? You can actually read this last part with me. To be thinkers and not mere reflectors of other men's thoughts. God is calling for his people to use their brains. And there's, there's no, no reason why God's people can't be in the head and not to tell when it comes to intelligence. And we don't need to depend upon some AI to tell you what truth is, friends. We have the source book right here. It's a great fact checker, you know, truth teller. This book has the source of truth. We don't need AI to do that. Now, I'll tell you something. I've, I've used it. I, 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 I put it on it. Just like I've Googled it. I've Googled, like, you know, give me all the Bible verses. Or give me some Bible verses about faith. I've Googled that in the past. Google it as in a sense of a kind of a non version of AI. Okay? The search engine. The algorithms it uses. When you put it in a chat GPT, give me Bible verses about faith. Boy, it knocks out some good ones. You can tell what translation you want it in, the format you want it in, it'll lay it out for you. It can be a tool. But ultimately, this is the source itself. The word of the living God. Not some opinions of, of you. By the way, hold on. One more time. AI. How does AI get the 
information. Like, what's the source? Like, like it's not just concocting things out of thin air. How does it know what it knows? When it gives you an answer, where does it get all that information from? The internet. Really, that's it, the internet. Now, is the internet historically known to be consistently factual? Accurate? Truth filled? Oh, friends. You want to find anything false? Just go on there, you're going to find it. It's, it's all out there. So the idea that, 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 that this AI has the capability to filter through all the errors and lies, <coughs> friends, it's, it's not. So AI has the potential to dumb down our generation. Chat GPT is using, to this day, uh, some of you guys in college, you may be experienced it this last year, where you've seen students, and you can get in trouble for it. They'll go online to this, this um, language model AIs, and they'll, they'll put in these, these queries, say, write me an essay on this, and it'll put out an essay. And, and, and they're getting slick, too. Give me an essay with some typos and grammatical errors. And then they'll submit that as their paper. Looks genuine because it's got some errors in it because, you know, AI wouldn't get it wrong. They may get an A on the paper. They may not get caught for doing that, friends, but did they really learn anything? No. I mean, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm susceptible to this. When, when, it, when I don't know how to spell a word, <clears throat> uh, Alexa, how do you spell? In fact, I, I, did, I did it in preparation for this message. You know, I, at the beginning of my sermon, I talked about uh, these, these movies I watched, and I was, I was trying to type up the word Odyssey, you know, the 2001 Space Odyssey. I was trying to type up the word Odyssey, and I, I spelled it. My spell corrector wouldn't show me what it was like. Oh, okay, I'll try to spell it this way. I couldn't spell Odyssey. Um, Alexa, how do you spell Odyssey? It has two Ys in it. I'm like, what? You know, so that, you know, what, what, does it accidentally have two L's or one L? You, you, you have to kind of spell it out. That's why you have... So the key is, are you going to learn from it or are you just going to ask it again next time? This leads, if you're not careful, it leads to laziness. It leads to lack of personal growth. Now, on a more spiritual side of things, and this is kind of my last thought here, AI is being used by theologians, by philosophers to brainstorm ideas. and I, I, That could be good, that could be bad. But if you depend on it as truth... You're going to be in major trouble, friends. We have, a, we have a source to check everything with. But AI is being used in a very diabolical way. It's being used to bring back the dead. They, 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 they put in all the source information, everything you could, letters and documents and books that people have written, and on this one person, and they, they, they program it all in and say, now, portray yourself as this person. And people are talking to their loved ones intellectually they know that they're dead, but they're still living through technology. Friends, I tell you, spiritualism is spiritualism. Okay? I'm just saying we need to be especially careful about this. More and more people are treating AI like a god. Like an idol. Now, when, you, when they worshipped idols in the Old Testament, what happened? They worshiped idols in the Old Testament. They, they, they created a, 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 they, from, a, from a stone or from a tree, they created some kind of image, right, that represented their so-called gods. And they ascribed to these, the characteristics to these gods. Remember the, the Baal prophets they were calling out to bring down fire? Um, only God could do that, of course. And so people today, they, they, they figure that they can create this AI creation just like, just like in the Old, Old Testament, they were creating these, um, these, these, these sticks and, and these stones that were idols, right? So they're creating something of their own devising. They're creating their own gods. But this one actually talks back. And this one has ideas that you seem to like, well, I didn't think about that. And people are giving uh, amazing amounts of respect and, and adulation and... Uh, even um, reverence to computers. And they say to themselves, you know what? This computer has all this information, all this knowledge, and with all the computer models that it puts together, it comes out and says that the earth is still 4.5 billion years old. That God 
is still a figment of people's imaginations. That, and just all these different ideas that are incompatible with biblical faith. They say, well, there's my reasoning why I don't want to believe because I have, and becomes a God for them, a source of truth for them. Friends, they're trusting to the devising of their own creation. They're building a new Tower of Babel. Friends, you could call it the Tower of Intellect. It's where they worship. They look to this Tower of Intellect for salvation. They say it will cure cancer even. Artificial intelligence, possible salvation for mankind. This article in Medium, this is back uh, in 2015, long before uh, AI really has come as far as it has. They say that AI can cure cancer. It can solve the climate problems of our world. It will unite humanity together. It will be our salvation. It, you can even take AI and, 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 and computer chips and you can implant them in your head, which will make you bionic, right? These cyborg type beings. You can enhance yourself where you're, it will enhance your intelligence. It will enhance your own personal ability to, to think and to reason, maybe even live longer. And it's trying to make yourself a god. Listen to some of these quotes from this article uh, here by Philippe Colton or Colin. It says here, man will soon be surpassed by his own creation. It will have recreated God. And God may support him or may equally destroy him. Man will be considered by machines either as God or as the devil. Indeed, when machines are millions of times more intelligent and faster than us, why would they bother with primitive humans? Like us. The article goes on to say, it seems that collaboration between man and artificial intelligence will be essential for the very salvation of mankind. The very salvation of mankind. Because machines want to live and survive as much as men do. The salvation of mankind, it says. We must organize the partnership now whilst the two are still in a single life form so that. They have a shared and common fate. Man then will achieve the status of God and will create an intelligent being which will itself become God. Superior to the first God, entirely omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. That's blasphemous. Man will have understood from the outset that his creation, uh, man will have understood from the outset that his creation is not a threat, but his salvation. He will merge with his God in order to escape his own downfall. The two gods will become a single God, which will perhaps expand to other worlds in another place one day. Not a threat, but his salvation, it says. And you know, and by the way, this is, this is infancy. This is at the very beginning of this movement. As it grows and expands, we're, it's exponentially growing. Mankind is looking to... to machines for their salvation. Satan will take any kind of worship he can get. Friends, God is calling us to act wisely in these last days. As knowledge increases, God would have us seek the true source of knowledge. Amen? The Creator Himself. Revelation says there's two things you can do to prevent from getting the mark of the beast. One is have your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Friends, if you have not made your decision for Jesus and put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life by putting your faith in Jesus, repenting of your sins, I encourage you, please do that. Don't delay. But friends, there's another way. Revelation 14 verse 12 says, God is looking for a people that won't get the mark of the beast. They will be keeping God's commandments and they'll have the faith of Jesus. Do you have that today? Do you love God so much you're willing to keep all of His commandments even when the world tells you under compulsion and threat that you, you, you go to your bank and all of a sudden your account's empty? What will you do? Will you stand faithful and loyal and true in these last days? Anybody here will raise their hand and say, God, I will stand for you though the heavens fall. Now let's pray. Father, I pray that you would do that in each one of us, that you would give us that new heart new desires, and Lord, give us, like you gave to Daniel as he obeyed you, give us that, that knowledge and wisdom and understanding that's even supernatural, 
so that we can understand Bible prophecy, so that we can be prepared for the trials to come. Give us faith and strengthen us for what's to come. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.